All right, so in the last video, we saw that Hitler attempted to take over the government through violence in 1923. The beer hall pushed and it did not work. He's eventually released from prison. You know, he only spent months in prison, didn't even have to serve his full sentence, and he's released. But there's restrictions placed on him. He's not allowed uh, to give public speeches uh, anymore. Uh, and so the, the Nazis get smart, and, and they buy a newspaper and begin use it as a propaganda tool. Um, but they were a fringe party throughout most of the 1920s. A uh, very small party, not very influential, not terribly important. But then in 1929, the Great Depression begins and the German economy fell apart. Now, this is important because Hitler had been warning, the Nazis had been warning that the German economy was quite fragile uh, and that it would eventually collapse. Then it did, and it, it brought attention to Hitler. People began to say, well, what else is he going to get right? And eventually the uh, ban on public speaking is removed, so he can now tour all around Germany and campaign uh, for the, the Nazis. And eventually, after after a few years, they become the largest party in the Reichstag, the German parliament, because they tapped into that, that anger that was there. He, he promised to make Germany great again. He promised to resurrect the economy. He promised to create jobs. He promised to create that Third Reich. He promised to, to uplift the German people. He said nothing was their fault. It was the communists and the, the socialists and the Jews. It was their fault. It was those non-German people that polluted their society. And they become the largest party in the Reichstag. Now, there were multiple parties, though. So even though it was the largest party in the Reichstag, it was nowhere near the majority of the Reichstag. It only had around 30% of the seats in the Reichstag. But what he was selling appealed to industrial leaders and aristocrats and military officers because he promised to protect them from communism, much like Mussolini in Italy. And they saw in Hitler someone they thought that they could, could, could uh, control, use as a puppet, basically, uh, to, to guide the nation. And they begin to support him, thinking that they can uh, control him, which, of course, turns out that they, they, they cannot. They were mistaken uh, in this. Uh, eventually, Hitler is made chancellor legally. Uh, he, it, this is all nice and legal. So think about this. This is the guy that attempted to overthrow the government in 1923. Now he is the chancellor of Germany. But that does not make him the Fuhrer, the leader. He is not the dictator that he envisions himself to be. A few more things are going to have to happen. One of those things is the Reichstag building is burned down not long after he's made chancellor. And a man was arrested, uh, and he was a professed communist, and and this this is what Hitler was looking for. Now, some have theorized that the Nazis actually burned down the Reichstag themselves to create a crisis. Either way, Hitler and the Nazis take advantage of the crisis because they they can say, "See, I told you we were under uh, attack from within." Right? You had these terrorists within our borders who are undermining the government. It's an emergency, and so the Reichstag passes the Enabling Act, which enables the government to ignore the Constitution for four years. Now Hitler, right? He could begin to act like the Führer, a, a dictator, leader, like in Mussolini's case in Italy, because now the Constitution has been suspended. It's like the Constitution doesn't exist. And of course, once those four years are up, they're not going to bring the Constitution back. Right? They're just going to keep all that power to themselves, and then. President Hindenburg dies, and Chancellor Hitler announces that there will not be a replacement president. Said he's going to merge the office of president and chancellor together, thus giving him all the power. Now he is the Fuhrer. He is the leader, and he will do what Mussolini does. He'll outlaw all of the political parties except the Nazi party. He'll become the dictator of Germany, and the Nazis will begin to control every aspect of German life and society. And oddly enough, uh, Hitler was actually admired uh, uh, at first. Time uh, magazine's Man of the Year. You know, they, uh, they he had admirers in in Britain, even in in the United States, who who saw in Hitler a you know a strong powerful leader who was rebuilding his country right 
of course, that's not how the story uh, will end. So what kind of government did they create? Well, it was a racial state. Everything was about race, 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 race. If, if you were not a pure so-called Aryan. Now, the, the Aryans were a real ethnic group, by the way, uh, but Hitler misused the term. The real Aryans uh, conquered northern India. Uh, the, the German people are not descendants of the Aryans. He, he misused it. Uh, his view of the Aryans came from a, a weird mixture of bad history, bad archaeology, and a little spiritualism and occultism. So crazy doesn't have to make sense because it's crazy. Right? Uh, and so if you aren't a, a pure so-called Aryan, if you could not demonstrate that your uh, bloodline was pure for back to three generations, you know, there are going to be consequences. There are going to be jobs that you could not get, positions you could not get. Even worse, if you were uh, a, a Jew, right? uh, you're going to start seeing your rights taken away because everything was based on race. And they're going to use state uh, uh, terror, state-sponsored terror, to control the population. Eventually, there's the creation of something called the SS, or Schulzstaffel, uh, led by that man on screen there, a former chicken farmer named Heinrich Himmler. Uh, the SS started off as Hitler's personal bodyguard, but eventually grew more powerful than the SA, actually arranged for the downfall of the SA, something called the Night of the Long Knives, uh, and they become, in theory, the best of the best of the Nazis. Uh, there is, at first, there was even a height requirement to be an SS member. Right? They were supposed to be the best of what the Aryans had to offer, except for Himmler himself. As you can see in the screen, not a terribly physically imposing and intimidating figure. But the SS, these become the true believers of the Nazi calls. These are the men who are going to run the death camps. These are the men that will eventually run the gas chambers. These are the men that are going to organize the Holocaust, what the Nazis call the final solution to the Jewish problem. It's these men, the, the SS, the Schulzstaffel, and eventually the SS and Heinrich Himmler also control the Gestapo, the Nazi secret police. Remember, it's the job of secret police to go after people who do not support the government. It's going to be the you know the Gestapo that that the people fear because uh, uh, you never knew exactly who was reporting to the Gestapo because not all Germans were Nazis, by the way. There are a lot of Germans who weren't and who some flee, uh, others stay and resist. There was always, always, always a resistance movement in Germany. The problem was a lot of the really good Germans, they didn't do enough. And there are those that, well, why didn't someone try to assassinate Hitler? They did. There were actually multiple assassination attempts on his life. So even with the Gestapo and all that fear, there is always a resistance in Germany. Always, always, always.